Let's be honest, parenting can be messy and hard, but also so rewarding. In this podcast, we'll share all the ups and downs of parenthood, as well as share some of our favorite tips and tricks for parenting using both our experiences and expertise from our professional lives as a speech and language pathologist and teacher, but also our everyday lives as moms just trying to balance it all. We're so glad you could join us. Hello, welcome to And Then We Had Kids. I'm Jenny. And I'm Sheena. We are excited to have you listening in. I like cannot believe that it's like almost the holidays or like it is the holidays. We're like in we're the like, thick of like the preparation for it. Yeah, we're in full holiday excitement. Uh, yeah, I, you, I think you've done this for like a couple of years but this year is my first with an elf on the shelf. Oh, welcome to the elf on the shelf. What a horrible. So, so wait, there's like, so my husband <laughs> is incredible. And like, I do love the idea of like the holidays and like traditions, creating memories. I love like all the magic behind it. I feel like my parents did the most incredible job of like why I, I know I do and like my siblings all love the holidays so much that my husband I mean before Thanksgiving was like should we do like an elf on a shelf and I'm like okay like we can so like I made a list of all the like the calendar of where the elf is going to be so oh, I wait. can be prepared so I'm I would sorry be- what? You have you have a calendar and you're like you already have it all planned out. I made I I did make like a this Google is doc. The organizer <laughs> overachiever yeah. well, in you and I love it so because that we'll, is not we'll me. go back to that piece in a okay. little bit. So yeah, so I have a Google Doc because I was like I don't want to be feeling. Like, oh, shoot, I have no idea what I'm going to do. Granted, my kids are four and two, right? Like, I could do almost anything, anything and it's good enough. Whereas, like, you see on Pinterest, again, a nice rabbit hole to go down a very elaborate places, design, setup. And I like to mix it up with props. some of the elaborate stuff. With yes, some you're more good with simple that. stuff. So mine is like basically just like hopped around my playroom so far <laughs> for a few days. But it was funny because the day, like November 30th, my daughter comes home and she's like, So this boy in my class says that there's an elf who's coming to his house tomorrow. Do is there an elf gonna come to our house? And I was like, Oh, thank goodness. We did thank start goodness this you had this your Google Doc. Now. Yeah, the peer pressure, the positive peer pressure, I guess, that's going to be coming into our house. So sure enough, I was like, I got it. It's going to be great. But I will say, thank goodness for social media, because that night I completely like forgot about it. He was still in our basement. I had to like go down and get him. And then similarly, last night I was like already in bed, ready to go. And I'm like, dang it. Yeah, forgot to move the elf. Him. So I'm like, hot start. So while, yes, I do have my Google Doc, it only takes me so far if the execution isn't there. Did they, did your kids like name the elf? Yes. And I will say you have the book, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it comes with the little kit for people who don't have one yet. I feel like I'm like the last one of like, someone who has a four-year-old I I don't really like do the he's gonna tell Santa if you've been like naughty oh we do I know it's totally like it's great like it's it works for people like they got the great threat of Santa I also um... have permanently changed my sister in my iPhone as Santa I love that you've Picture done this. So you're like, I'm going to call. I'm going to text yes. him. I will text Santa updates. If you're being really naughty, I'm going to text Santa. And then he gets yeah. all, no, don't do that. I'm so sorry. I'm like, okay, well, 
I have the year round threat of Santa because you Santa at least is have in my that. Phone. It's not just your month of December where your kids are good. Like you have that at your arsenal all year. Correct. So me being, you're definitely. I can't believe you don't use the threat of Santa. I don't. I mean, like. So I'll what? Use, he just I'll like it comes to hang out? <laughs> I mean. Yes, I, he does. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> no there's like a little bit today I did say I was like if you're not being nice to your brother like you've been pushing him you're not sharing you're being very confusing you're not using your words all that good jazz I was like that's what Alfie is here for he's gonna tell Santa um but I think this is also like the first year that she's kind of grasping the idea yeah getting it um Um, so no I don't have like it's it hasn't been I should say just overused but it's very light. So in the story, it's, you know, they say, they talk about, you know, if you're if you're not nice, this is what he does. And, like, don't touch the elf. Like That is the big rule in ours. Mine, she, she does touch him um, because she's just so excited. Yeah, the big rule in our him, house so. is we do not touch him. His uh, name oh. is Elvis. Oh, you're cool. Mine's Alfie. Yeah. Yep. Elvis the elf. Um, does yep. Elfie do like mischievous things or is it just kind of a game of hide and seek? Well, it's been five days and oh, they mainly, yeah. <laughs> and it's mainly been just around the house, kind of like a hide and seek or like in her toys. My son doesn't really care. I don't, I don't know about how your younger feels about it. He cares, but only because the older one cares. So he's right. like in the stage of where he wants to do everything his older brother does, yes. including there are times he asks to go to the bathroom on the toilet. So we oh, might I have an early doing that too. trainer. Yeah. So, uh, but since his older brother is really into seeing what Elvis has done today or where Elvis is in the house, um, he's into it also. He's into it. Yeah. No, mine doesn't. The younger, he doesn't care. It's kind of like my daughter will be like, look, he's over here. What, look what he did. Look what he, this note he wrote us. And he would just rather play with a truck that I have out. Yeah. Or sometimes will cause mischief. Sometimes he'll do funny things. Sometimes he'll have magic tricks for the kids. Um, Sometimes he will like bring them something. So like for his arrival, he brought them new Christmas pajamas. That's cute. Um, the big question always is like, will he make it if I'm sleeping over at grandma and papa's house or Gigi's house? Oh, um, yes. So we yes. were at Gigi's house this weekend and, and Elvis knew where it. to find them. And he made he it. I mean, like the there. Christmas magic, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Or that a mensch on a bench. If you're, if you celebrate Hanukkah, there's a mensch on a bench. I do also have one of those. I purchased both. Yeah. Um, I had both in my classroom back in the day. And that's when it all started for me was I used it in the classroom to kind of, it was like, like can get really on board with it, especially because you taught the older kids. I taught the older kids, but it was right at the age where they were still believing and yeah. like give them another year or two and they weren't. Yes. Um, but I, at, at least in my classroom, when I did it, I framed it as more of like, the elf encouraged them to do acts of kindness for the month. Yeah. And then we remember we used, I used to have that giant Grinch that we used to fill up. I mean, I could not forget that giant Grinch. Miss him. It was a beautiful one. Yeah. You put on your door and so for all their acts of kindness, they could put up a little heart. Mm -hmm. And if we filled him up by the end, by like right before winter Winter break, break, we could have a big elaborate party. I always attended your parties. (laughs) I would. I got to go to all the parties. Yeah. So yeah. So I also feel like I have time to do the elaborate um schemes and mischief behavior of the it elf just because causes, I got a lot of just, years, right? Yeah, it requires also like planning. And so it depends. Like so sometimes I will plan a few of them out. Yeah. Um, and get either little trinkets or whatever for them. You know, like I've and I've got it on my um, Instagram, I have like the highlights of Elvis yes. the Elf. So you can go back and see the past, like, th- I think this is year three for us at home. Oh 
my gosh. Um, of all the different things that Elvis has done. Yeah, he's rock yeah. climbed on the cabinets. He's gotten stuck in the blinds. Um, yeah, yours are cute. But then there's times I, too where I often like, oh shoot, I forgot to move him. He's just gonna like play peekaboo, just you know. Be here. Yeah. yeah, under the blanket or something. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I also just love the holidays because of stuff like that. Like I like the activities. I mean, my husband and I joke that we probably won't have like an evening to ourselves until like post New Year's. And while it's stressful and a lot, like we I love it. I do love like going to holiday parties. I love like we just went to my daughter's school, put on they rented out a movie theater and played the Polar Express. Oh, for fun. the kids. It was so cute. And so like they had hot chocolate. The movie theater provided popcorn. The kids all got like a ticket that looked like the Polar Express ticket. They got a little like bell at the end. I love all that stuff. It was super cute. And so and so my mom used to be a preschool teacher. My sister is kind of like on a hiatus of teaching third and fourth grade, myself working in a school. So we also take time to put together what we call like craft week. Um, and it's like not really any designated week, but we just essentially in our little like text thread, like send each other crafts that are easy for like toddlers or kids to do. And we'll get together. I mean, we also do like cookie decorating um, before Christmas, even Christmas Day. But our craft week has kind of become like a tradition that we started not too long ago. Oh, and so we have that coming up and that like got, I know me and you thinking about, you know, we got all this time coming up potentially with being around for the holidays, being right. on winter break. Um, what can you do with kids when they're home? I think there's like often a lot to do, right? But there's also times where you feel like you have that downtime. Right. Or they're like high on all of the sugar from the cookie oh, decorating everything. and candy canes and the chocolate yeah. coins or whatever it might be. Um, that how do you kind of keep them focused while they're stuck at home and some kids love to play outdoors when there's snow and stuff like that outside. And then there's other kids who hate it. So like, yeah. How do you entertain them if, if playing outside isn't an option? Yeah. So we like did a little perusing you and I, and we found a couple of activities that we wanted to share and that I'm going to test out this week during craft week among like some other ones that I have, but <clears throat> excuse me, tying it in also to this concept. I know you, talked about being being a planner and an organizer which is so true I thrive on list of any kind a checklist a google doc anything that I can like cross off um and I would say that that's like a skill of mine it is a skill of yours and and not everybody everyone just thinks their own way what in our field what we refer it to is my executive functioning and everybody has this ability. Everybody has executive functioning skills, whether it's a strength or less than a strength. Yep. There's a nice wide range of that. I think there's also a wide range of skills that fall into the executive functioning category. So I think a lot of times people automatically assume it's it's organization or maybe time management. Yes. Um, and that's there's a, piece a lot of it. more. That's one. Yeah. Those are just kind of some of the skills involved with executive functioning, but it can also include like emotional regulation. And there's a ton of different other areas. Um, one of my favorite books when I was learning more about this in education was actually a book written for parents called Smart But Scattered. I mean, an incredible book. It's an incredible book. It's incredible. Again, book. It's, yeah. It's written for parents, but mm -hmm. it's also really helpful for educators. Yes. Um, it talks a lot about, too, of understanding your own executive functioning strengths and weaknesses and that those may not be the same as your children. And so strategies that work for you may not work for your kids because they have different strengths and weaknesses with executive functioning. Yeah. Um, and executive functioning, I 
I love that was like my jam part of what I did a lot at the school and I worked with you um we had an occupational therapist there and her and myself we ran this weekly group and it kind of like took off and it was it was amazing it was probably one of, one of my favorite parts about working in the school um, not only because I really was passionate about executive functioning but how we taught it um and and co-teaching it was just I think we were able to show what can kind of feel overwhelming and or like boring yeah. Um, yeah. in in fun, different ways. So like you said, executive functioning really has a lot of components to it. And we, for these younger kids and younger, I mean, like grade school, we did focus on the planning, organizing, that attention span, the time management being flexible, like what you were saying, that um, emotional regulation, that grit, you know, we've so using like a growth mindset yeah. um, that we'll talk about more in a future episode. Um, and there's, and there's definitely more that goes into executive functioning and these skills are developing from, you know, childhood all the way up until young adulthood. Right. So right. I think when we, I just use this example, or I think of this when we tell kids, like, get ready for school, get ready for bed. Like, what that entails when you actually break it down, there are so many steps yep. that yep. go into it that can lead to um, a lot of breakdown. Not necessarily like emotional breakdown, but like missing parts of what you need to do or then having to go back and do something. Um, so when, when, how we can support our kids is like giving them the steps, like being really direct and at the same time, supporting them through that, any kind of like problem solving right? that like they have. Any of those hiccups that occur along the way, how do you help them navigate that? Yeah. And it, and it's twofold where we want to like teach them what to do because I mean, I, I also think of when our kids that we would work with and my kids now, they don't have the ability to like plan ahead to have that like next two or three steps ahead. So we do have to do that like teaching. And then there comes a time in this group that I ran with the occupational therapist, we would tell the teaching assistants and teachers at times to sit on your hands. Yeah. If we were yeah. doing an activity where it was simply um, thinking about the holidays, like I think we did one where we just made like holiday cards for people in the community. And, you know, there was different elements to it. But even as something as simple as a teaching assistant helping a child cut something out or open up a glue stick was taking away an opportunity for them to problem solve, whether that means figuring it out themselves, asking for help, right. or like trying a different way. Yep. And so, so often the teaching assistant and teachers intentions are good. I would say not so often, always like that's their job, right? So you're like, people's intentions were good of helping them, but we would say, sit on your hands. If we, if you, if there really comes a time, if like a kid's being like unsafe, obviously, right. um, we would want to intervene before that. But those little steps of helping them figure out what to do next or the how to sitting on your hands seems silly, but it works because you could find yourself even as a parent, if you're like doing something, even if you're like having your kid help you bake or working on a craft or like doing something, how often you might just like move something closer or open something up or just make those things. And again, there are time and place when like you obviously need to have, have to do that to, for efficiency and things like that or safety. Yeah. But if yeah. there's time and it's okay to let a child struggle a little bit to figure out what do they need to do? How can they ask for help? What comes next in whatever they're completing? Yeah. I think the other thing I liked about the way you guys structured those classes, and maybe you were going to talk about this, um, but it was also like visually helpful for them to organize because you did it by the get ready, do, done. 
right? So get yeah, ready so- is like all of those steps you need to plan for like what, if you're going to bake cookies, right? Like what are all your ingredients? Yes. Yeah. So there is this model by a speech pathologist. Her name is Sarah Ward. I mean, I she was one of the first um, continuing ed presentations that I went to. And she like, it was one of those where you just like walk away with so much great information. And this was a key takeaway, like you said. So we would use these three visual boxes, um, green, yellow, red, um, or yellow, green, red is how it went. And we would always start with what the done looked like. Yeah. So like you yeah. said, if you're making cookies, which I know I will be when it comes time for the holidays, is that you start with a picture of what the done cookies look like. Yeah. Whether it's like you're making gingerbread cookies, whether you're making frosted cookies, whether you're making any kind of cookie. So you just have an idea of what the done looks like. I'm making funny faces. You can't see right now, but I swear my child is coming downstairs. <laughs> um, so if we hear an interruption, it is my daughter. But anyway, so you start with what the idea of what done looks like. And you have the kids see it, look at you, talk about it. And then you would go to what materials, what items you need to get ready. And that was the yellow. So when we would talk about all the things, like you said, the ingredients, but also like do we need a mixer? Do we need right. measuring cups? Do we need bowls? So like, what are we using to, to mix it and stir yes, it? Yes. All the, so the ingredients and like, we would call it materials, like tools yeah. and materials. Um, And then the next thing you do, you would talk about the steps you would need to do. And we also talked a lot about how like everyone's done product is going to be the same, but different. Yeah. But, like the same is because everyone uses the same everyone's getting the same materials, everyone's getting the same ingredients, and they'll look different because, you know, you get to add your own personal touch to it. Um, But it was such a nice way. The idea of what done looks like, that was like this, oh, you don't just like start with all these materials in front of you. Is she walking down the stairs? Is she right there? She is right here. Oh, hi. Are you saying hello? I'm talking. Can you finish what you need to do? This is also just reality of life. Yeah. Parenting. Can you finish what you need to do and go to bed, please? Look at me. Just telling my kid to go to bed. As I said, all those steps that go into it. You're not tired. Classic. Well, I'm currently doing something that you don't necessarily have to be here for. So go upstairs to your room and close your eyes. Good night, sweet girl. Yeah. Um, so a lot of activities that you can do at home, you can work on different executive functioning skills yourself. Like you can I think work it's on- helpful for me too, in that my idea of what done looks like, just like you said, like everyone's done can look different. My idea of done could look very different than what my kids are going to produce. And that's okay. Like, I yeah. think the anal retentiveness in me struggles with that. Yes. That's but the part where it's like, sit on your sit hands. Sit on your hands. Sit yes. on your hands. I'm just yeah, again. telling myself that with your voice in my head. <laughs> A lot of what I said, like Pinterest worthy art is out there. And sometimes it turns out looking very similar. And other times their kids have their own idea of what it looks like. And you kind of think to yourself, what's, what's like my... So what, like, what am I trying to work on? Am I working on doing something to connect with my child? Am I working on something that helps them problem solve? Am I working on something that helps them figure out that we have a 25 minute time period to do something in? What's my, so what? So if it's not that you're trying to create something to like either give to somebody else or put into like some art contests or whatever, then it's okay that it's not looking exactly the same or it's not how like I would really like it to turn out to be. <laughs> the perfect example. And I, I think we have this on our list of activities. Um, But I, you know, in all of my spare time, I also mentor a high school student Um, and she and I actually made gingerbread houses this afternoon. Oh, fun. That is a great one. It is. And that was where, you know, (laughs) as a high schooler, she's a senior in high school and I am a, you know, older adult. 
Um, how, oh my gosh, the number of times where like we we were really working on our emotional regulation because I bought the t- the kits from Target and I was like, next year I should just buy the pre-made ones because our done did not look the same as the beautiful gingerbread houses on the Target box. Though, yes. But it was okay because the intent <laughs> was, you know, we were spending some quality time together. Yes. But oh my gosh. And then the two of us are just cracking up because I, you know, as I'm on my way to drop her off at home, her whole gingerbread house collapsed in the backseat of the car. But oh, but I mean, like, she handled, I mean, it sounds like you're laughing beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the, the two of us just had a good laugh about it. But that's even something that, as you know, I think she's probably 17 and me as a 40 year old, like, we still struggled with it. But yeah. it doesn't mean that it wasn't fun doing it. Yes. You know, and like my kids love doing that stuff too. And I just have I to get up for it. It's those... not going to look like the the beautiful completed one on the box on the cover. I mean, but what an opportunity you worked on her attention span to be able to maintain and do an activity for an extended period of time. Worked on that flexibility. So it wasn't just about like the planning and organizing, but all those other pieces, um, and while, yes, I love those kits for the convenience factor of, like, everything is in one spot. Right. I feel like those are often, like, stress level increasers. That, that is what she and I both <laughs> determined. And I was like, if we do this again in the future, I am purchasing the pre-made kits. Yeah. Where all we have to or, focus on is decorating. Yes, that is an option. I mean, we used to just um, use... I mean, they're a little bit trickier to find now, but like old milk cartons and we would just use like frosting and graham crackers and like bought like M&M Skittles. That's a good idea. Candy cane. So like while they're, and it was a little bit different where there really wasn't like a done to try and like match. Right. It was basically like create what you want. And we would put like food coloring. So one would be green, one would be red. Um, but yeah, that was like our nice simplified version of gingerbread houses before there was all these kits. Available. All these, yeah, it's elaborate kits. Yeah. Um, there was another, I'm trying to think of some of the activities. Oh, I found another one, which I'm excited to try this one. It was like a cookie sink or float activity or a science experiment. Yeah. Where we got like, you know, Oreos, Chips Ahoy the famous Amos like any kind of cookie and you get a glass of milk and you take a guess first if they are going to sink or float I haven't tried that one yet but I'm excited and I feel like my daughter will also enjoy it I think another one that we've tried in the past um we I think we I did this last winter um when there's like snow out on the ground is painting snow Yes, we did that too, based on your suggestion. Yeah. With some watercolor paint. You just got like, we put a paint or some snow in a bowl. Just, yeah. On that's a tray. All you or do. A on a tray. Something. Yeah. I think I had like a tray that I just went outside, collected some. Um, you can also do it with ice. Yes. But it's just a real fun way that there there is no exact done, right? No. Um, yes. It's more about just the process and that time span, you know, the attention span, um, problem solving. Those yeah. Kinds and of if fun, something like doesn't things. go how they want it, I think I'm seeing yeah. that more and more in my daughter where she has an idea even in her head of what she wants something to look like or, or feel like, yeah. um, that working on that flexibility again, that like identifying emotions when you're feeling frustrated or upset and what can you do to work through that? How can you stick with it? For our listeners, because you can't see what's happening right now, she is not going to bed. Yes, my child is is, sitting next to me. She is sitting there, and I get to see her gorgeous little face. um, I've seen it the video all day. It's been great. Now she needs to go to bed. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So we're gonna put um some other activities on our blog that you can definitely check out, and we'll put in there a little bit of some helpful tips on how to work on executive functioning. 
And again, thinking about that, so what? Why are we working on this? And a lot of it comes down to just you have that time together. So enjoy it as much as you can, even though our little ones sometimes make us. What? How do you make me feel? Happy, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) When you don't go to bed. Little. She's just too cute. Yeah. So, okay. Well, thanks for listening. We'll post some stuff on our blog and social media, but we hope everyone um, enjoys their holidays and stay warm. Thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To catch all of the latest, you can follow us on Instagram at underscore and then we had kids. Thanks again. And like we say, Life used to be carefree, and then we had kids.